Welcome back. Well, pets, they can have some pretty strange health issues, and sometimes you look at them and you don't know what you're seeing, but you definitely know something isn't right. Today we are talking about something called cherry eye, which has really piqued um, some curiosity here. Please welcome our pet vet, Dr. David Visser, in the studio to tell us more about this strange-sounding condition. We, you know, Gary said, you know, we heard of pink eye, but, you know, what's, what's cherry right. eye? Well, cherry eye is one of those unusual things. It's a strange name for medical condition, but uh, cherry eye is somewhat common uh, kind of problem in dogs and it gets its name from the appearance of a cherry like bump at the inside corners of one or both eyes. Now I have to go back a step though so that people are familiar with what normal dog anatomy is like because people need to be able to know what normal is before they uh, check into what's unfamiliar. Now dogs and cats actually have three eyelids and compared with humans who only have two. Now in addition to that upper and lower lid they also have a whitish third eyelid arising from the inside corner of each eye and there's no muscles attached to it but when the eye muscles normally pull the eye backward or if the eye is pushed backward during examination like that then that third eyelid comes up so we're just gently pressing that eye back but we can see the third eyelid now when it comes uh, the third eyelid comes forward it becomes visible as that little whitish um, uh, appearance in the inside corner now that image shows the normal appearance of the third eyelid and invisible to us in this image is the fact that there's a tear producing gland that is right behind the third eyelid and it's nicely tucked away and secured down by a small ligament. Now we were looking through there earlier and there's, they showed some images of this thing called cherry eye but I'll talk more about that uh, coming up here. Is, uh, is cherry eye, I'm sorry because I just, it's like, I, I've seen it once, but it, was, it wasn't as severe in those pictures. It looked, right. really, looked really painful, but does it happen due to like a problem with that third eyelid then? Yeah. Is that how that is? It actually is. So when we're talking about something on the inside corner of the eyes, that of course is the area that the third eyelid is. And so when that third eyelid gland comes loose from its attachment, it can pop up over the edge of the, of the lid. And it's not only in the wrong position for the gland, but that tight lid kind of puts pressure on that gland and it interferes with its circulation causing it to swell and become red. Okay. This then of course is an image of what it looks like when it looks um, all swollen. This eye uh, has as you can see looks very different from the way that it should look. Okay. So that's what cherry it, eye will actually it, look it, like. It looks like it hurts. Is it is it painful? It looks like it it just looks like it really hurts. Yeah, it, it's, it sometimes can be, but most of the time, not. Uh, they might not show any discomfort at all, but it can irritate the cornea, it can cause an ulcer or a wound as it rubs over the surface, and that, of course, can threaten vision. Okay, so I, I've seen it in dogs a lot, but does it happen in any other Cats, do cats ever get yeah. it too? It's more, it's at risk. <laughs> it can happen in okay. cats, but it's really rare. Um, most of the time we see it in dogs, and I see it probably several times per year. Uh, the most common breeds of uh, dogs that get this are Boston Terriers, Cocker Spaniels, Bulldogs, other Spaniels as well, and then Beagles. And of course, mixes of any of those breeds can be affected too. But any dog that has this can have the same treatment regardless of what breed is affected. Okay, so how is it treated? Is it drops or like ointment or something like that? Yeah, I wish. We can reduce the swelling, but um, that's not going to actually get the gland down where it belongs. Decades ago, veterinarians used to just remove the gland surgically. But remember that tear production comes from this gland, and so removing it actually lowers total tear production. And many of these breeds are the same ones that are prone to developing a more serious condition called dry eye. And that's when they don't make enough tears. So it's never been acceptable, mm. but for decades, it's no longer being performed to remove these glands. Otherwise, you're trading one problem for an even greater problem later. The actual proper treatment for this is to retack the gland back down to where it belongs. It is a surgery, but it is very effective as well. Now this is a series of images of a cute little puggle that came to me. <laughs> you saw this dog earlier, but this young dog came to me with cherry eye and both eyes. And in the first image, here we are getting ready to go under anesthetic and have mm -hmm. his operation. But this next photo then shows the operation halfway done. Oh wow. It's all taken care of. And the third one was taken immediately immediately after I completed the procedure oh, wow. and of course everything is back into its normal position. You know what, and it doesn't, it looks almost back to normal immediately, just yeah. right there. Yeah, it's putting something back where it belongs. And so by putting the gland back down where it belongs, uh, it, it gets everything back to normal. And recovery is very straightforward too. Pets usually go home later on the same day with instructions of using a protective ointment on the eye, maybe a week or so. And they may also have a, a proverbial cone of shame shield oh. color. <laughs> maybe we could figure out a way to call it the halo of success <laughs> instead though. Uh, but there's no stitches that 
need to be removed later. And while recurrence can be uh, possible, it's really unlikely. Um, I think it's also important to know that not all practitioners feel comfortable doing this kind of delicate operation. So check with your veterinarian. At least know that there are local options to have this taken care of. Okay, cherry, cherry <laughs> eye. Cherry. Yeah. Well, it, it's an odd name, and some of these old names from the past are still around. We just need to make sure that old ways of treating things are not. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Grister, because I didn't know. I didn't know I saw it, but I didn't know anything about it. But I'm glad to know that, you know, it's it's something that can be treated. Yeah. Listen. And, it, and it, it, it's, I don't want it to be disturbing, these images. Yeah. I want it to be informative. If we see this kind of thing in our pets, we should be uh, addressing it. And, and people might not have recognized that that's certainly an abnormality, but that there's something. And don't treat the dog all not nice because it's not looking its cutest, okay? Sometimes you don't look your cutest, okay? You, you still think somebody should treat you nice. So still treat the dog good. Okay, listen, if you want to contact the pet vet, Dr. David Vest, you can reach him at the Center for Animal Health by calling 888-PETS-VETS, or you can just send him an email at michianapetvet at comcast.net, and we'll be right back.